Hello, and welcome to Office Hours. I'm Dr. Megan. I'm a board-certified physician in internal medicine, lifestyle medicine, and obesity medicine. And every week, I answer your questions on this channel. So if you're confused about your weight, if you have questions about weight medicine, and if you want medically-based answers to your questions, you are in the right place. So let's get started with the questions. As a caveat, as always, I can't answer personal medical questions because I'm not your personal doctor. So if, it, if your question is a little more personal, I'm gonna change it slightly so it's more broadly educationally applicable. Also, if you wanna work with me directly, I will leave that info below. I do help people focus on the non-medical aspects of their weight as a life coach as well. So I'll leave all that info down below and let's get started. This person is on testosterone and Munjaro and does testosterone work against the effects of Munjaro? So, and this is a, this, the person who's writing in is a woman. Um, so traditionally, um, testosterone supplementation can be helpful for men who have hypogonadism or low testosterone. Um, if we are, if they are clinically depleted, um, and you are replacing the testosterone, uh, men often find that it is easier to lose weight. Um, however, in general, um, for women, you have, you have to be very, very careful with testosterone supplementation. It's not something that I prescribe. Um, you want to make sure you are seeing either an endocrinologist or a gynecologist that has a lot of experience doing this because you can, it can go wrong very quickly and you want to make sure that you're, you know, getting, um, the most beneficial results with somebody who has a lot of experience doing this and really knows the pros and the cons of this. Uh, so I, I think that goes in general for testosterone supplementation in general for men or for women. Um, it's not something that I do in primary care. I really feel like uh, the urologists and the gynecologists and the endocrinologists are such a helpful resource. And so for any of my patients, those are the people that I will refer to. Um, but uh, regardless, um, in general, it does seem to make weight loss easier for men. That being said, they're really women, most women are not on testosterone. So it's hard to say whether it is interfering. I will say that sometimes if you're on testosterone and terzepatide or a GLP-1 agonist, you can slightly increase your risk of hypoglycemia. That's more important if you have diabetes, you have to watch out for that a little bit more, but it's possible that if someone was hypoglycemic, they may find themselves eating more around the time of their testosterone injection or their Munjaro injection if they're, um, if they're, close together. Um, but I would say definitely, um, this would be a time where the, not only the scale, but your, um, body composition measurement would be particularly helpful. And also just looking at the general trajectory of your weight loss. So if you notice that, you know, whenever I take this medication and then I take terzepatide, my weight's bumping up a little bit, just zoom out and see, is the overall trend going in the right direction? Because, you know, as I've said before, it's kind of like the stock market. There are gonna be these fluctuations and you might just notice that for your body, this is what happens, but everything is in general moving in the right direction. Um, so that might be, that's definitely one thing to look at. The other thing is your body composition. So of course, for many people, you know, the scale is one number, but Another helpful measurement is your body composition. You can do that with a um, with a DEXA scan, as I talked about before, or there are some um, there are some like the in body scan or the CICA. There are different types of scales that have this um, that can do this type of measurement as well. So I think that's also a helpful measurement if people are a little confused about what's going on in terms of the number on the scale you can look at a body composition to get another set of data points to make sure things are moving in the right direction. And as always, if you are 
um, if you are on some sort of hormone replacement therapy and you are on, um, a GLP-1 receptor agonist, you know, definitely let your prescribing physician know for the GLP-1 agonist, but definitely check in with whoever's prescribing your um, hormone therapy, whether that's an endocrinologist, your gynecologist, or your urologist as well, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. But thank you so much for that question. Okay, this question is about somebody's on the low dose of Zepbound and they're wondering, in theory, when is the time they should think about bumping up? Um, I, of course, can't answer personal medical questions, but my general rule is, you know, it's got to be at least a month on that dose. And if I'm going to bump somebody up to the next highest dose, I want their side effects to be really controlled or mild or at le- at the very least, like very manageable. Um, and Certainly, um, if we've found, if their weight loss has plateaued or slowed down a little bit, that's always a good time to go up. If I have a patient who's lost a lot of weight on a low dose, I'm really going to keep them at that low dose for a while because you don't know, like their trajectory might be very different than the average trajectory. And this does happen sometimes. Sometimes people you know, get on that 2.5 dose and that's all they need. And those people are very lucky, but, um, you don't want to bump them up. I don't want to bump them up quickly because they, we might be overshooting the mark for them. So I think if somebody's really, you know, their weight loss is, you know, more significant than I would expect, you know, more than a couple pounds a month. And to be honest, I'm actually not expecting very much weight loss on, that 2.5 dose at all. So if somebody really hasn't lost weight at that dose, that's not a problem. Their side effects are either, you know, well-controlled or manageable or non-existent. After a month, after those four doses, I'm definitely going to think about bumping them up. Um, And certainly if their symptoms are um, kind of coming back or they feel, or maybe they lost weight in the beginning, but that's kind of plateaued a little bit, then I will also think about bumping them up. Um, but certainly if somebody's losing a significant amount of weight in the very beginning, that's somebody that I'm going to probably keep on that low dose for a couple more months, at least just to see where it goes. So thank you for that question. Somebody who has been on terzepatide for a month, they're also on hormone replacement therapy, and they're wondering, in general, is your menstrual cycle something that can be affected by terzepatide? Um, Does it go away? Does it happen to everybody? Um, Is this a common side effect? So basically, how does terzepatide or does terzepatide impact your menstrual cycle? Um, So in theory, it shouldn't. Um, it's not one of the you know commonly listed side effects. But we all know that not everybody falls within the range of commonly accepted side effects. And there are plenty of things that happen, especially now that millions of people are taking this medication that we find out that, okay, it wasn't listed on the original column of side effects, but a lot of people are experiencing that. And I would say changes in your period are definitely one of them. Now, if I had to guess how this is happening, one possible mechanism might be because the GLP-1 um, the GLP-1 medications um, do impact the hypothalamus in your brain. And that's a large part of how they are effective. But your hypothalamus is also part of what we would call the hypo- hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. There's a lot of communication between your hypothalamus, your pituitary gland, which is also in your brain, and the gonadal system, so the genital area, the genital organs. Um, So it's possible that that is one place where terzepatide is interfering, and that may be why some people find that their periods are changing more. Uh, It's also true that, um, and we're still learning a lot about how these medications affect various other systems in the body, but certainly um, weight loss can also affect Um, fertility and your menstrual cycle, um, usually it improves it. Um, We know that 
Um, when people who it's people lose weight, their fertility, imp- if, if their weight was at a higher BMI than we think was helpful for them, um, when they lose weight, uh, in general, fertility improves, um, periods might get more regular. Um, I'll link a study below that was a review study on um, terzepatide and PCOS, but in general, what they found was psychoregularity improved um, with weight loss on uh, terzepatide. So uh, there's so there's many different ways that your period could be affected by weight loss and by this medication, and it's still definitely an area that we are just scratching the surface on right now. Uh, I will say also that terzepatide in particular can interfere with oral contraceptives. So if you are on the pill, um, that's something you need to be aware of and you definitely um, need to have a backup form of contraception um, because um, the terzepatide may interfere with the efficacy of the pill. And so if someone is on hormone replacement therapy, um, depending on what that is, that might also be, uh, the terzepatide might also be interfering with that. Um, also, anytime somebody has um, really irregular bleeding or really heavy bleeding, um, or, you know, really, uh, especially if it's in the perimenopause or, or especially in the postmenopause period, um, you definitely want to be checking in with your gynecologist to make sure there is nothing else going on at that time. So if this is something that's coming up for you, also, you know, take a look at the medications that you're on, but check in with your gynecologist as well. That was an excellent question. Thank you so much. Is the average weight loss, this is about metformin, is the average weight loss of 3% over a year, for example, or depends on the patient? Um, I'm finding after taking it for three weeks, it has helped with some appetite suppression. I'm not craving as many sweets. Um, Yeah, that 3% is really just where your weight ends up. So for some people, that might be three months. It might be six months. It might be a year. It does really depend on the patient. Um, In general, a good rule of thumb is if you haven't seen the expected results after about 12 weeks, you really want to think about, is this, um, is this a good fit? Now, thinking about that also, you want to take into account other contributing factors. So especially for other medications that people are on, um, I will always think about that too. So if somebody's on a very high dose of something like Paxil or gabapentin, and it's been 12 weeks, and I really haven't seen much of a uh, much of a change. I probably will continue bumping that GLP-1 uh, medication up because I know sometimes for people on some competing medications, you kind of have to get further up the chain of doses before you start to see an effect. But in general, um, we're looking at an expected effect of around you know 12 weeks or so. Um, certainly I'd want for somebody on metformin, you know, they might not reach that by three months, but I'd want to see a little, a little movement or at least that they're feeling, they can feel the effect of the medication. So they are having less of an appetite or less cravings or things like that. So it definitely depends on the person, but you want to see some change at least by three months, or then it's time to have a conversation with your doctor and really kind of reconsider if this is a good medication. Do you want to change a dose and go from there? So that is going to do it for today. Thank you so much for all those wonderful questions. If you have questions afterwards, please feel free to leave them, comment on this video or on another video. Um, I really love hearing your questions. And every question that you send in, I think really benefits many other people who have the same questions. So thank you so much for sending those. I love reading them and I love to share them with you all. Um, If you wanna work with me directly, I will leave that info below. Thank you so much for watching and please be well.